Thanks for joining in on another one of our Hunter ADOS education videos featuring the DOS 3000 and the ADOS link. Today we're going to show you how to calibrate the intelligent around view monitor system on a Nissan. Stay tuned for that. Today we're going to actually go ahead and calibrate the camera on this Nissan. This Nissan was hit on the driver's door and the mirror was taken off. No damage to the mirror or the camera. However, anytime that these mirrors are removed, you're going to have to do a calibration. This is part of the intelligent around view system on a Nissan. This is when you put it in reverse. If you look at your screen, yes, you'll have the backup camera showing you what's behind you, but you also have four cameras that produce a bird's eye view of the entire surrounding of the car. After you replace a mirror or took it off, maybe you have an X on one of the cameras saying it's no longer available to be seen. If you had an X on the surround view system, possibly on this one, because it was removed and taken off, you'd want to go through the calibration process. Even if you don't, in the case of this one, I don't have anything wrong with my image. I'm still going to have to calibrate it though per Nissan. This one is a little bit different in the way that we've done it in the past. This one, we're gonna use some different tools and a different layout than you may have seen before. You'll also notice I don't have the DOS 3000 rack with me right now because that's not needed. I'm going to create my own grid on the floor to calibrate this system. You'll see out here on, the, on my bench that I have the tools laid out that I'm going to need, including some painter's tape. I got a distance meter. I've got a measuring tape, I've got laser, I've also got chalk line as well to help me keep some straight lines, and of course a plumb bob and my ADOS link. All of these are the things that you're going to need to be able to do this successfully and create the grid on the floor that the system needs to use to calibrate correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the calibration of my mirror on this Nissan. First thing that we're gonna do is need to get into diagnostic by selecting diagnostics on my ADOS link. So let's go ahead and get into diagnostics and auto ID our vehicle. Of course, it's gonna read the VIN for us. And we're gonna cycle the ignition. As with any ADOS calibration, especially one that comes from a body shop or just had service done to it, you're gonna to wanna to do a pre-scan to make sure that you can check the DTCs before. And then of course, we're gonna do a post-scan at the end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is read DTCs. I'm going to select all, press continue, and then this will give you the option to select pre-scan, which I'm doing. I'm really also generating a service report of before calibration and then afterwards for the customer and for yourself, for your records, showing what we did to this vehicle. So this will take a few moments, and of course, through the power of editing, it'll seem like it's a snap. Okay, our scan's complete. We can go ahead and save that. And we'll go ahead and move back into our ADOS calibrations. Select ADOS calibration, and we're gonna be dealing with the surround view camera system that we're gonna be calibrating. Remember, there's four cameras, but I'm specifically dealing with this one right now. So we do have some choices here that we're gonna go through right now and we're dealing with the right around view monitor camera. So that's the one we're gonna start with. We'll talk about the fine tuning of the bird's eye view after we go through the calibration. Remember this procedure you may have not seen, you're gonna be creating your own grid on the floor with some type of painter's tape or whatever will stick to the surface of the floor that you're working on. So we're gonna select that right one and of course, the ADOS link walks us through step-by-step, step, measurement by measurement on how to build your grid correctly so that you can calibrate this correctly on the first try. It does give you an idea of the equipment required, which we've already gone over. And again, it's gonna tell us why you are calibrating it and when you need to do so. Anytime that the 
cameras are removed or replaced, and that's exactly what we're dealing with right now. Of course, there's the other options on here on why you would do this that are listed as well anytime another camera was removed or something in those regards, replaced or, or so on and so on. So we know that. Your preconditions, those are always laid out. And in every video, we've always told you what preconditions need to be going on, including ample lighting, good floor space, open area, free of any metal objects around, tires inflated, no excessive load on the vehicle. All of these things are very important when you're doing an ADOS calibration. We're gonna, of course, go through the guided tour summary. I don't wanna skip through this or that, what's the point of the video? So we're gonna go through guided step-by-step -step procedures on how to do this. And you can see right here, you do need a little bit of floor space. We'll press continue there. And of course, now we're gonna start getting into it. There is eight different steps that you're gonna go through when building your large grid pattern for the camera to use to calibrate. And the first thing it's gonna do, we have to do, is establish center line front and back. So we're gonna get our plumb bob out, a little bit of tape, marker, and we're gonna get our center line of our vehicle established. Use the emblems on the front and the back of your vehicles to help establish a center line, you with your plumb bob. Let's go ahead and see what our ADOS link wants us to do next. Okay, we're gonna select continue. And it's asking us to do the rear as well, which we just did. We've got our front and our rear already accomplished for our center line of our vehicle. We'll press continue. Now it's going to have us pull a line from the rear to the front. And then we're also gonna create a distance that extends uh, more than 750 millimeters past the vehicle front and back. I like to use my chalk line so I can tape it down and then kind of slide this under the car and use some tape to start getting my center line stretched to where they want us to do that. So I've got our string run from our mark on the back and our mark on the front, pulled nice and taut to keep that center line. Now what we need is a distance of 750 millimeters from our first point A to a new point on the floor here. That's what we're gonna do now. You know, sometimes this would be a great time if you had a laser line. You could also use one of those for your straight line as well intersecting those two first marks we made establishing our left center line. So from point A, I'm gonna come back here and do 750 millimeters front and back and mark those off with a piece of tape as well. Let's go ahead and press continue and see what's next. Halfway through, four of eight, but trust me, still got a little while to go here on this one. So next, what we're gonna do is from that line we just created, 750 millimeters from our first center line point, now we're gonna go out left and right from that point. And what it's asking us to do is make another point and they want us to go 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters past the edge of the vehicle here. So what we need to do is make sure that we kind of, I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a chalk line or a string here so I can create that line here and then I'm gonna go 300 millimeters, 30 centimeters over. And we're gonna do this all four corners of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and get started on that now. Now 
Now this step is not specifically stated while you're doing this calibration, but it's gonna make it a lot easier if I just run this string along the edge of the tire, front and back, extend it. That way I can make sure that I can go from that distance that they're asking. So we're gonna to need to go 300 millimeters past our vehicle there, which puts me at about 121. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take this string up and do the other side. So that's basically rinse and repeat. So we have our center line established and we've also got our four corners set up that are 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters away from the edge of the tire kind of extended out. So we've got those four corners set up. I can remove both strings I've got now and the other tape on the floor and keep these four corner ones I've got set up now. And then we'll go ahead and press continue and see what they tell us to do next. Okay, we've got our four corners set up of the B1, B2, D1, and D2 as well. Let's go ahead and press continue. See what we got to do next. So now we're gonna from point B1 to D1, we're gonna go ahead and put some tape all the way down across. So we're gonna do that on both sides of the vehicle using our painter's tape. You can see what we're starting to try and build here when you look at the screen right now. So that's what we're trying to build. We have our four corners set up. We're gonna go ahead and run a line of tape from point to point. So we've got our tape marked on both sides of the vehicle from the marks that we created earlier. Let's go ahead and press continue. So we've got our square set up. You can see it's set up on the floor as well with our painter's tape. We're gonna go ahead and press continue. So the next thing we're gonna do is get our center of our wheels using our plumb bob. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We went ahead and go ahead and mark the center line of all four tires. Now we can go ahead and press continue. This one we're gonna have to create a couple more lines on our grid. So at, e point, at each point E, which is our front tire, we're gonna go back perpendicular um, and we're gonna do that 1,000 millimeters from that back tire and create another mark. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on both front tires and create that next mark that we need. Now 
Now the last thing it says to do on our screen is to take tape and run it this way and then we'll also run it from the back wheel perpendicular to the vehicle. So our grid is set up now according to the ADOS link and the measurements that were required. At this point, we can go ahead and press continue. But again, you can at least get an idea of what it's supposed to look like and how much floor space you're gonna need. Our grid is set up now, let's go ahead and press continue. And it does give us a final interpretation of what it should look like when we're all done. It tells you if you're not set up like this, go ahead and press the back button, but we're gonna press continue. On the next screen, adjust the camera by using the axis X and Y and rotate in order to line up the calibration lines shown on the, on the camera screen to the target lines that we just created on the floor. When ready to see the results from the adjustment, push apply and it will then be shown to the camera screen. If the adjustment is correct, push OK and the new settings will be written the module itself. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. At this point, let's go ahead and take a look inside the vehicle at the screen itself to see how well we're lined up. So here's our blue line. This is the line we created our grid. This is the line we're looking for to create with that image so we can adjust using our ADOS link as needed to line it up where it needs to be. So the image we have here where it's asking us to change the axis and then the image you have on the screen, they are not live. So you almost need to play around a little bit with it, press apply, and then go ahead and see what it does. It will update the screen as you do this, but right now the calibration was successfully completed on this. So we made the adjustments we needed to make based on the lines that were on the floor, adjusting our axis as we needed to. Again, if you're off a little bit, go back into modify and readjust it to where it is on the floor. Once you've done that, you will be successfully completed. Now at this point, if you had any other problems with the other three cameras, you could go ahead and continue with all three. I have no other issues with the other three, so I'm going to say we're good to go with the calibration on this around view monitor system since we took off the right mirror. We can press continue here. And of course, I'm back out to where I needed to be. Our report is saved now at this point. But there is one other step that we want to go ahead and do if you are off just a little bit. If you go back into your surround view camera, there was one other option you could do in this around view system, and that was the fine tuning. So if we select the fine tuning of the bird's eye view, maybe you weren't exactly happy with the way that it lined up with the tape. Maybe you wanna tweak that just a little bit more. This is the procedure that would allow you to do that. And you're gonna see all of these procedures are what we've already done. So this is smart to do if you're just not quite happy with where you want it to be. So now you have a different screen that showed up on the actual display of your infotainment center. So this is where you can actually go ahead and adjust and fine tune it a little bit to the lines on the floor if you're not exactly happy with that. It's gonna have us do the rear one. Here's our rear one that it's looking for as well. I'm gonna change that a little bit. We'll press continue. Here's our passenger side camera right here.
And at this point now, I've done the fine tuning of all four cameras after I've done the actual initial calibration on the right side passenger camera. At this point, kicks us back out. We've left the screen there and we have our post scan uh, report saved as well. We successfully calibrated our right side mirror on our around view system. And we also went through the fine tuning of all of the cameras while I had my grid set up. That's a good practice to do. You don't want to tear this down and find out you're a little off. Last thing, just go ahead and put it in reverse. Make sure that the screen lines up and everything looks as it should before you return it to the customer. And of course, post scan and print out and save your report as well. Anytime you want to see more of these videos, just head on over to the YouTube channel where you can find Hunter and all of their ADOS videos for different kind of procedures that you can do with the ADOS Link and the DOS 3000. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.